our second story out front tonight. Guns in America. Now, politicians promised that the Newtown massacre would change everything. But since it happened just two weeks ago today, 277 people in this country are dead because of gun violence, according to a tally compiled by Slate. And Americans are sending mixed messages about where they stand on the issue. A new Gallup poll shows that 54% still have a favorable opinion of the National Rifle Association, which is adamant that new gun laws are not the answer to stemming violence. And that's down slightly just from one year ago. On the other hand, a poll by the Washington Post and ABC shows that 52% of Americans favor banning semi-automatic weapons and 59% support a ban on high-capacity clips. Out front tonight, Roland Martin and Margaret Hoover. Full disclosure, my brother. How's it going? Good. Good to see you guys. Margaret, I'm going to start with you. I, I, know, I know that you, you grew up hunting. Your dad took you hunting in Colorado. One of the sea changes we've seen in the wake of this shooting is senators like Joe Manchin, like Mark Warner, these folks, A-rating from the NRA, saying, look, I've changed my mind. I've changed my heart. Joe Manchin saying, I've never hunted with more than three shells in a clip. So why isn't this a conversation that we can be having more broadly and getting Republican senators on board? Well, what I would also point you to is that the Democratic governor of Colorado in the wake of the Aurora shootings also said, I'm not sure if an assault weapons ban would have stopped James Wolseley in this massacre in Colorado. In fact, an assault weapons ban wouldn't have stopped him. And so it's not just a Republican or Democratic issue. In fact, as you know, in 1994, the Democrats took a huge political walloping mm -hmm. for, for walloping. Do you like that word? Like you kind of, yeah. uh, for, that. For, for instituting the assault gun weapons ban and the, and the House of Representatives, as we all know, went back to Republicans for the first time. I, in four I'm years. not sure that's he, why they took he, the walloping. Here's, one a one of them. here's the primary reason why we have had, frankly, a fake conversation. Mm. And that is, anytime you talk about guns or gun violence in this country, it goes to, oh, well, if we do this, it, will, it would not have prevented this certain act. Mm -hmm. the, the issue is not what just took place in Newtown. The issue is that we have an epidemic in America when it comes to gun violence. And so with this conversation, it has become so one-dimensional where it's only about guns, it's about a magazine, when it hasn't been brought in to deal with poverty, to deal with economics, to deal with mental illness. And so you have to look at Newtown, you have to look at Chicago, you have to look at staying your ground laws in Florida. It's a much broader Absolutely. gun issue. Now, you're talking about a comprehensive reform. You're talking about a larger conversation. Now, Margaret, I want to read you a quote by Senator Marco Rubio on this subject because he did seem to indicate a change of sentiment in the wake of Newtown. He said, through a supporter, uh, Senator Rubio supports a serious and comprehensive comprehensive study of our laws to find new and better ways to prevent any more mass shootings. Now, that is one of the few Republican senators who did send that kind of a signal in the immediate wake. Here's the question. If we agree it's comprehensive, and part of this is serious, obviously, mental health issues, and you've spoken out about that, why can't high-capacity magazine clips or assault weapons, which have no purpose other than to kill as many people as quickly as possible, be part of a comprehensive conversation? In my view, and in the view of many reasonable people, everything should be on the table if you can prove that it will work, or if there's a sense that it will work. And roll Roland's laughing at me, but the truth is, Roland, if you can, and I agreed with you the other night, you said if you can take 8% here and 8% here, 8% right. here, you should do it. And, and I think that is a reasonable approach. The reason, the reason I'm smiling is because we're trying to have an inverted conversation. New, Newtown was a moment. Mm -hmm. Aurora was a moment. John, what you're really asking for is where is the movement? That's right. And so with a movement, there has to be a starting point. If you look at the civil rights movement, that started with, in terms of Emmett Till, three months later, Montgomery. Montgomery's supposed to be a one-day boycott. You have to have people on the ground who then begin to drive this issue. The conversation can't start in Washington. Washington is an after effect. It has to start with the people in various places driving them to move. If that doesn't happen, they will not now, move. You're absolutely right, because that, that is the history of movements in America. But there is going to be a bill. We know for a fact that Senator Dianne Feinstein is going to introduce a bill on assault weapons and high-capacity magazine clips on the first day of the new Congress. Okay. Why shouldn't more folks get behind that, Margaret, including some Republicans? Be because I'd, I'd just like to remind you one thing. Senator uh, 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 Scalia, Justice Scalia, the vaunted Scalia said in the Heller decision, like most rights, the Second Amendment is not unlimited. He said it is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, for whatever purpose. From, from the, the, the high priest of the Supreme Court of conservatism himself, why, not, why doesn't that create some room for current conservatives like Ronald Reagan did in 1994 to back an assault weapons ban? The, the issue is 
Are you going to be punishing law-abiding gun owners with these kind of regulations? I mean, there are plenty of people who own these guns, who have a right to own these guns, who are not part of the problem. Are you punishing those people who have a right to own those guns because there are crazies out there that you're not affecting with this assault guns? Weapons? Yes, there is nothing, about, nothing about this that touches mental health. There is nothing about this that touches Margaret, the media. Do I really need to shoot 30 bullets at one time? Thank you. Is, is, is 10 is, okay? Yes, I'm, no, no, I'm just asking. Is 10 okay? Who is presumptuous enough to determine no, no, no. But, what but, that but, number but see, is but, but see again, for law-abiding but, 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 but again, this is part of this whole issue. Even when you say high-capacity magazines, mm -hmm. well, you got people who are law-abiding. Of okay, course bye. you do. And guess what? If the people who are law-abiding say, you know what, I can hunt, but... First of all, that means you're a bad you shot if you need 30 bullets, okay? <laughs> yes. but, you know, but again, you have to have those folks step up. But, John, she can introduce the bill all she wants to. But unless you have massive public pressure, which is why I got in a lot of trouble last week and I wrote a column when I said, mm -hmm. do, if, if, a, if one of those mothers did what Mamie Till did and says, show my baby in an open casket mm -hmm. versus the photos, it causes people their whole view to change on this issue because we're confronted with it. We don't want to see what it looks like. We don't well, want to look at that. And that's why we're continuing the conversation. That's a great point about Emmett Till. Um,